let's go through bond issuance first. So yesterday, you had some $23 billion of orders for the $5 billion bond dollar. Were you satisfied with pickup? We are satisfied. I think uh, Saudi Arabia have made it very clear that they are going through uh, a, a very uh, well-articulated strategy in terms of tapping uh, to the debt market, whether it is international or local. I think yesterday showed very clearly that you know demand on Saudi credit is very high, very healthy. We are very pleased not only with the level of demand, but also the pricing. You know, investors have started really pricing Saudi uh, in the right way. Uh, we reduced the pricing significantly compared to uh, the last year's issuances, so we are very pleased. So what comes next? How much more issuance can we expect in 2020, and will it be in euros next? I think we are considering euros. We are considering, obviously, Saudi real, uh, and we are likely to issue also sukuks uh, in dollars. Uh, but that will depend a lot on the market. I think sentiment is very positive, demand is very positive. People you know, started seeing results of Vision 2030 and, and the numbers are proving that reform is working and, and we are you know, basically cashing on these successes. So when, when will you decide and, and what kind of amount would we be looking at in issuance? We, I think internationally we are unlikely to go for more than $9 billion uh, dollars equivalent uh, throughout the year. Five is done already, so four is remaining. Uh, this will be through either issuances as uh, we did yesterday uh, or through alternative uh, government financing. We are also talking to ACAs uh, and other uh, funding institutions just to make sure that we also diversify our funding portfolio. Uh, Minister, government spending will fall this year. Are you worried that that will actually impact the non-oil economy? Not at all, actually. Uh, government is, is redu uh, expenditure is reducing, but we're reducing very uh, relatively in a very small way. It's about 30 billion uh, Saudi rial out of 1 trillion. So it's a it's very small amount. Uh, the reason for that reduction is two. Basically, the results of all the efficiencies work that we have done over the last three years mm -hmm. have now started yielding results. Second is the private sector actually involvement. We have awarded quite a lot of private sector projects mm -hmm. in infrastructure and soft structure in the last two years and now actually more uh, work uh, to the private sector is being given. But if you see a slowdown or recession, could the government start spending again fairly quickly? I mean, we are we are prepared. We are very dynamic. Uh, you have seen that in, in, in 2017. Uh, we spent when we needed to spend. Uh, I am very, very confident that the economy is picking up. You have seen the uh, third quarter uh, results, uh, private sector GDP grow by 4%, which is the highest in, in five years. Non-oil GDP is growing highest in, in the last four, four, five years, 3.1. So we are very confident that the economy is picking up. We are seeing actually leading indicators saying that actually private sector confidence is back. PMI indices is the highest in the last five years. So we are very comfortable. Uh, how much are you expecting the PIF and the National Development Fund to spend domestically? Obviously, the National Development Fund mandate is only domestically. So they, they, their focus, and now they are aligning with the seven sub-funds, i.e. the real estate, industrial, agriculture, tourism. We have just established a new fund of 15 billion Saudi real for tourism industry, which is one of the sectors that are very promising. We have seen successes there, uh, although we have just launched it softly. Uh, so that's the National Development Fund. PIF mandate is actually to focus on local uh, markets. They are investing in sectors that are newly opened. You know, that requires large investments, that re requires the first movers, but they are also catalyzing private sector with them with still investing internationally, but okay. less than locally. If you look at the expat levy fund, do you, do you, ex do you uh, expect to increase that this year? Uh, no, we don't. I mean, this is as planned. Uh, we are going with the plan. Now we have reached the, the maximum, which is uh, 800 rials a month uh, for those who don't employ equivalent number of Saudis. Mm -hmm. uh, that will remain uh, going forward. If you look at Saudi Aramco, so first, you know, what's, is it likely that uh, some of the commitments for dividends will actually increase compared to what, you, you know, was promised to shareholders? Obviously, this is a listed company. It's a public company. It is trading as we speak, so I cannot <laughs> uh, comment about that. But the company have made it very clear that they are committed 
uh, for the next five years to, to a minimum dividends. Uh, depending on their cash flow, they will distribute, but I cannot really comment on that. Are, are you still really looking at a possible international listing for Saudi Aramco? It is still in the cards. We have said, made that very clear. We will consider it, but I don't think it is going to be any time soon. Okay. Um, Minister, we also had a, a story today about uh, phone hacking of Jeff Bezos, uh, possibly by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. D what does that actually mean for Saudi Arabia? D does it hurt investor confidence? Will there be a follow through? I don't know how you see it. You're the first Saudi official we speak to this about. I think the, the uh, embassy in Washington, Saudi embassy in Washington, issued a statement last night or early this morning saying clearly that this is absurd. They called for an open investigation so that people know what happened. What are investors asking you now? Is there, is there still a, a problem of perception with Saudi Arabia? Or actually, are they focusing on the fundamentals that we just talked about? I think investors are focusing on fundamentals. They see the growth. They see the potential. We, have, we are seeing, actually, a growth in FDI, uh, a growth in the number of applications for licenses. Uh, so the confidence is actually back, and back in a very strong way. With G20 now, uh, Saudi Arabia assuming the presidency, we are also focusing on that. We are working with our partners to bring consensus, to deal with world challenges and, and bring about world solutions. Yeah, where do you see the world economy going? Are, are we risking mispricing a, a uh, downturn that could be around the corner? Or are you pretty confident that actually the, the trend is here to stay? I think, uh, obviously, economy goes through cycles, but I don't think there is any serious risk for this uh, year, 2020. I think it is going to be stable with a little bit of growth, as the IMF have announced. Uh, but uh, with trade tension easing, with geopolitical uh, tensions easing, I think that will give the markets a very good kick to continue uh, growth through the year.